and welcome to Hardware Battlefield here at CES 2015 in Las Vegas. This is the main event. This is what we're all here for. I'm John Biggs. I'm going to be your moderator for this session. Uh, with me, I have James Park, CEO of Fitbit. We have Susan Paley, former CEO of Beats and uh, currently an entrepreneur. Uh, you're running around being uh, <laughs> very pathetic. And uh, Craig Dalton, CEO and co-founder of Dodo Case. So these guys are going to be our judges. So what is going on on this stage? Uh, we have today, right now, we have four companies, four young companies who are vying for $50,000 and the Metal Man Trophy, which is an exciting trophy, uh, that they get to hold for a year. This is very similar to Disrupt Battlefield, uh, but it's all hardware all the time. Uh, I'm really pleased to announce, uh, introduce these first guys. These guys are Volterra. Uh, they have a great product. Everyone's going to have six minutes to pitch. Six minutes of questions. We have four in this in this round. We're gonna have another four later on today. Tomorrow we're gonna have another set, and then finally we're going to have a star-studded judging uh, extravaganza on the last day, uh, where we have the four finalists who are gonna be fighting it out. Fifteen companies, all vying for fifty thousand dollars. So Volterra, you guys are up first. How does it feel? Great. Let's, let's do it. Yeah. To be here. You guys are ready to yell at these guys? Absolutely. Yeah. I feel I, this, this is going to be interesting because this thing, uh, it, it exploded <laughs> once uh, on stage. So the fire, we put the fire out and this is, this is all brand new uh, furniture. So don't, don't make it explode this Not time. again. All right, so you guys have six minutes on the clock. Uh, let's see what you got. All right. Good morning. We are, we are incredibly excited to be here at Battlefield and we love hardware. But I got to say, building hardware sucks. You see, one of the biggest problems we all face is circuit board prototyping. Circuit boards are found in every electronic device, from your car opener to your thermostat, camera, and even your smartphone. Factories around the world spit out tens of thousands of them every single day, which is great for mass manufacturing. But earlier in the development cycle, when you just need a couple boards for prototyping, it's an absolute nightmare to deal with. Most designers outsource fabrication to facilities in China, pay a couple hundred dollars, and wait two weeks for delivery. When the boards finally arrived, they realized that they made a mistake. So they pay a couple hundred dollars and wait two weeks again. In that time, the product requirements have changed. So now they're back to waiting for weeks and on and on. A while back, I was working on a do-it-yourself project and decided to just make the board myself. I had barely gotten started before I got kicked out of the house and into the garage because as a hobbyist on a budget, the only way I could create that circuit board was a tedious etching process that required toxic and corrosive chemicals. We've spent the past year building a better solution. A printer that can create circuit boards in the time it takes to go get lunch. The user can design their circuit in whatever software they're already comfortable with. And then, as my co-founder Jesus is about to show us, they just press print. So while that's working, Let's take a look at a couple videos of the printer in action. Our technology uses a silver nanoparticle conductive ink to create the electric traces. Let's say you have a brand new idea and need a quick prototype, or are looking to get into electronics but realize the cost of making mistakes is too high. Well, a rapid prototyping tool can make a huge difference. We're also the only prototyping tool in the world to be able to print multi-layer circuits. We sandwich an insulating material between the conductive layers to create even more complex boards. When you're finally past the prototyping stage, you'd normally find yourself spending hours adding components to the dozens of boards you've ordered in order to build up beta units or for some final testing. With the Volterra V1, just toss them onto the printer and it'll even dispense solder paste and reflow bake the boards for you. We're going to be launching a Kickstarter this winter, and our customers will be able to purchase replacement ink cartridges and substrates directly through our website. We're not trying to replace mass manufacturing, just help our customers get there faster and save huge costs along the way. But let's take that a step further. If you owned a business, how would you feel knowing you were, you were paying your engineers to wait for the FedEx truck rather than building product? We live in a world where a company's agility determines its success. So to us, the choice between lead times of two weeks or just 60 minutes is an easy one to make. 
We've interviewed engineers from large tech companies, hardware startups, and the academic and hobbyist community. <coughs> they all agree that hardware developers need a faster way to prototype electronics. But more importantly, they were so excited about what they could do with this new freedom. Larger businesses can protect against IP infringement by keeping new development in-house. And it's our goal to put one of these printers on every designer's desk. One of our old professors from the University of Waterloo wants to print experimental RFID tags and antennas. Our friends at other hardware startups would have used this to get to their minimum viable product much faster. We've talked to electronics designers that want to put our printer beside their 3D printer for truly rapid prototyping. And the hobbyists, they just want to build cool stuff with custom Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. The rapid prototyping market is expected to reach almost $5 billion by 2018, quadrupling from today's numbers. Now, this started with 3D printers, but with the growing demand for electronics from users like these, we believe that circuit prototyping will drive this trend. Our entire team has recently returned from a four-month stay in Shenzhen, China, through Hexcelerator's hardware program. While there, we immersed ourselves in the world of manufacturing, certifications, supply chain, and were able to transform our Frankenstein of a prototype into something we're truly proud of. But what really amazed us was that even in the electronics capital of the world, the fastest we could get a board turned around was two days. With our printer, you need less than two hours. We're going to be launching our Kickstarter soon, so if you're interested in picking up an early bird unit, sign up on our website to be the first to know. With Volterra, if you need custom circuits, just press print. Thank you. Very good. So how, how long would it take to print the circuit board inside, that, inside the machine itself? Could it print itself? Yeah, uh, so our board would probably take about 15 minutes to print, and then there's a 30-minute curing cycle to dry the ink. So it can self-replicate itself? Yeah. And just start making clones of itself and just fill the world? <laughs> yep. All right, very cool. So you guys ready for the great goop of, uh, of electronics that are just going to take over the world? What do you guys think? Uh, it's pretty cool. I just had some quick technical questions. So like how, what kind of, how complex can the boards be that yep. you can print? So, so layers, question. blind vias, all that. Yeah, so what we do uh, is we support right now 8 mil space and trace and passage down to 0603. Um, in terms of ICs, we have a limitation on the pitch, so 0.8 millimeters. Um, and in terms of uh, layer count, right now for the launch, we're just going to be supporting two layer circuits. Uh, but eventually, it should just be a matter of a firmware update to be able to go higher than that. We just haven't done enough testing so far in order to support that confidently yet. Um, in terms of vias and uh, all that sort of things that come with multilayer, the way we're approaching multilayer is if you have a trace going this way and another one this way, we just mask the area where the two traces overlap. And that allows us to, first of all, it makes it a lot less computationally heavy for us, but it saves on ink and makes it faster for the user. And that way you don't even need vias. You have a sort of dynamic multilayer effect going on. So I've spent a lot of time in Shenzhen, so I, I feel for you. I know, I know exactly what it's like <laughs> over there. Um, so let me ask you a couple questions. Yeah. One, fourteen ninety nine is based. Are you getting the right margin that you need for something like this with a fourteen ninety nine price point? Yep. So this, uh, the fourteen ninety nine, is our pre order price point. It'll be going up after that. Um, and even with that, we have about a sixty percent profit margin on our uh, material costs. Okay. And you showed a pretty wide audience in That's terms right. of where you're going after. Obviously, you need to pick where you're starting. Yep. So kind of sitting here today, who's your first audience? Who's your first target for so, this? So since we're launching through Kickstarter, we know that our early adopters are going to be the maker community. And we're really excited about working with them because that's sort of where we started as well. Uh, so that's the initial market, the, you know, the 4,000 maker spaces that are located globally as well as home hobbyists. Uh, from that, hardware startups, we could have used this during our prototyping, and we know a lot of other hardware startups as well. Uh, we've seen a lot of interest from the academic sector, both as a teaching mm -hmm. tool and as a research tool. Uh, and that's from leading uh, electronics uh, programs across Canada and, and the US. Um, so that's sort of where we see our early market over the next year, year and a half. Um, eventually, we do see ourselves uh, approaching enterprise with a larger, more fully featured product. Um, and we'll take that to them with using more of a Xerox-based model, where we uh, charge them monthly subscriptions for ink, support, et cetera. 
Do you see this market being bigger, same size, smaller than 3D printers? It's, you know, it's really difficult to say so far just because um, it's really new. Conductive inks are a very, very new technology. But like I mentioned, there's going to be a huge boom in rapid prototyping. And because of all these other trends that we're seeing in terms of advanced robotics, Internet of Things, uh, the make movement, and, and the hardware explosion that uh, is happening, like uh, John mentioned in your interview, you know, in 2007, there were not as many hardware startups, and now it's just kind of exploding. Because of all of these trends, we, we think that circuit prototyping is going to be huge in the upcoming years. What's the reliability of the, the circuit that you can create? So we've got circuits that we printed months and months ago that are still working. Um, we haven't been along, around long enough to see if they've lasted for years, but I don't have any expectations that they won't be. Um, you're so imagining that people use them <laughs> in their prototyping process, they use it early yep. alpha. We are a prototyping tool. We just want to help people get to mass manufacturing faster, get to Shenzhen faster. Um, but right now, while you're prototyping, it just takes too long and costs too much. Were you guys able to print anything out of that while you were, while you, when you pressed print? Was it coming out? Can you yeah, them? so yeah, um, we stopped the print midway just because it's a little bit distracting for me while I'm pitching. But um, that one is a, uh, so it's still wet, but this is sort of what it ended up looking like once the components are added. Um, so I'm are not you, sure if you, you can tethered? see it. Are you tethered? Can we look, take a look at it? I don't know if I'm tethered down here, but uh, <laughs> if, you, you, if you want. <laughs> All right, let's try that. Just there we go. Click the button. Excellent. Press and hold the button, and you know, it's just something super simple that we created just to show that I think that's conductive it works. Actually. You can solder to it, but yeah. yeah. Just uh, press and hold the button. So Susan, would that have been helpful over at Beats to have a have a machine that can uh, that can print circuit boards? Um, honestly, once you're at the scale that Beast was at, we had a lot of local chip manufacturers. We could do all this locally as well, yep. and then. This is not something when you're at sort of the scale of a very large company that you're going to find incredibly helpful because you've already built in all the efficiencies into your company. As a startup, I totally get it. I mean, the one question I would also see is look at what 3D printers have done and look at how their costs have plummeted. Exactly. So when you think about if this thing takes off, you're going to be chasing your own margins really quickly to think about how do I stay competitive because everyone's going to get, right, this is just the next evolution yeah. of really the do-it-yourself rapid prototyping market. Yeah, when we got started at Dodo Case, we used a facility called Tech Shop that gave us access to laser printers and CNC routers, and I can see this having a natural home there where you can kind of create that first product, that viable first product to see if you really have something as a hobbyist or a small business owner. That's right. Mm -hmm. Are you going to buy one? I would buy one. I think our R and D team could use one. I mean, we have a ton of three D printers in house too. You don't want to build so. anything at home. You just want to. You don't want to build a home. circuitry. Not at home. No. <laughs> so, it's so rare. To, it's so rare to need a circuit around the house. Homeless to get away from work, right? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right. So that was our first company, Volterra. Thank you very much, guys. This Thank is, you. Uh, exciting Thank you stuff. Much. Up next, we're going to be changing over. Uh, next up is People. This is Hardware Battlefield 2015 here in Las Vegas. This is a. Uh, this is CES. What, what do you guys think of the, uh, the show so far? Have you been wandering around a little bit? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah. Love all the smaller companies. Um, I think there's an explosion of just really cool and maybe even crazy ideas, and it's always fun to see rather than, you know, things from large companies. So. Well, even a few years ago, this whole show was just Samsung, Microsoft, Philips, and I don't know, right. some washer dryer companies. Now it's small hardware startups. Yeah, drones, I've, I've wearables, everything. So. I've, been, I've been fighting for <laughs> hardware startups for years. Uh, have, you seen any, have you guys seen anything yet? I haven't been on the show floor yet. Yeah, I'm going this afternoon. So yep. it's, uh, but it, I heard that there's 20,000 people, 20,000 more people here this year than there have mm -hmm. been in previous years. So there's a lot of energy here. You can feel it. Why do people keep coming back to see us? Why, do we why do is it after New Year's? <laughs> why do we do this Can't they switch it? Why do they always have it? <laughs> they, should have it they should have it during the summer. Exactly. Just about set up. I think we got it. So we have 15 companies. There's going to be one wild card company. There's a place called Eureka Park here in the show. Um, it's sort of all the hardware startups. Mm -hmm. And there are, there's, I think it was like 75... 75 companies just for Indiegogo alone that have raised $24 million on Indiegogo. Wow. Uh, we have all our 15 companies out there, uh, or our 14 companies, and, uh, and we're going to be talking to these guys essentially all week. There's no, there's no value in going in and talking to Samsung because 
We've seen it all. They, they, do, the, they do spot launches at this point. Right. Uh, whereas all the news are coming out of here. So do we have people